or before the game, or Bobby oh, Lane. Uh, we played Bobby Lane, the quarterback for the Bear, for the uh, Lions. Right. And then, you know, he he party. He really party. And we're playing him in Baltimore, and we're putting a hell of a rush on him. And he's screaming out his offensive line that they're not blocking. So in the third quarter, we're laying on top of him, and he's hollering at him in his breath. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it, it reeked the whiskey, you know? I said, damn it, Bobby, we're going to get drunk smelling your breath. I said, you must have had a hell of a night last night. He said, I had a few at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind last night, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. I remember not telling tales out of school, but I remember when the Jets were down before the 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 Baltimore Colts game. When when Joe Namath predicted the night before he was they were going to beat you know Baltimore, yeah, right. which they proceeded to do the next day. And that that team was out the night before, partying like crazy. And Namath went out there the next day and played beautifully. Yeah, it doesn't bother you. Well, you know, what is, <laughs> like uh, I was drinking like a case of beer a night, <laughs> and the doctor says you got to cut it down. It was six pack. Yeah. So I did six 32 ounce cans. <laughs> and Johnny, looking at that animal, I don't know what it was eating that cockroach. <laughs> but it looked like me going after about 15 hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, now tell me, uh, it was the Bobby Lane? Was he the one that drilled you? That you kept no, putting no, him no, who, no. who was that? What was that Norman story? Van Brocklin. Tell him that story about the, the guy, guy that was really putting him down. He was, you know, the Dutchman, we were right? Him. Yeah, the Dutchman. Right. We were putting a lot of pressure on him. And uh, I hit him one time. He said to me, you fat son of a... I'll get you. You hit me again like that. So I said, look, I'm getting paid to hit you. That's part of the game, right? The next time I got near him, he hit me right in the face with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, down I go. And the rest of the game, I rushed the pass the license. <laughs> He drilled you, right? He hit me, boy. He hit me. Of course, you can't do too much to my face, but... Uh... Who, were, who was the toughest player you ever uh, was in the game? Oh, there were a lot of tough guys. I, you know, I would let my peers down if I said there was one tough guy. I think the dirtiest guy I ever saw was a guy that played on my team. And he played right behind me. His name was Bill Pellington. What do you mean dirty? What, what would he do? He's dirty. I mean, he'd do anything. Uh, he was indecent, really. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, he's rushing the passer one time and he tried to clothesline the guy. I mean, he hit him in the throat. Right. Well, he missed his throat and he hit him in the helmet. And this guy's out on the field. This guy's not even moving. He looked like he was shot to death. And Pellington goes back in the defensive huddle and he says, Damn it, I hurt my arm on that guy. <laughs> well, he missed his throat and he hit him in the helmet and he broke his arm, broke it right straight through and played five plays with a broken arm. That's tough. I'm telling you. The next year, they outfitted him with a steel brace. <laughs> and we're watching him in the movies going around, hitting people like a sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, an uh, uh, offensive lineman for the Packers named Billy Houghton came in a defensive huddle and said to the official, why don't you give the son of a bitch a gun and let him do a clean job? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, it's that good old American pastime, folks. <laughs> what, yeah, what do you think now of college football? They say student athletes, and it seems that colleges nowadays, I mean, do nothing but uh, the guys go there, and a lot of them never graduate from college. Well, you, you know? think we were any different? Well, I don't know, but you know, they keep saying student athletes. What do you well, think? I don't, I don't know. You, know, you think they should pay football? college players to play oh, for college? They do anything they want. I don't care. I'm out of it now. <laughs> but uh, myself and another guy, we flunked Spanish at Boston College. So they turned us down a, a tutor, and he tutored us for six weeks, and he gave us an exam. And he flunked us. <laughs> I said, what the hell are you doing? You just tutored us. He says, don't say anything. I need the money. I'm going to tutor you again. <laughs> OK. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow night.
know, uh, hey, 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 I know your type. We have a, <laughs> we'll have an intimate hour here together, kind of ecstasy, and then I'll have to go through your nightstand to get car fare home. <laughs> no, that was a long time ago. How are you? Sound good tonight? Yeah. Friday night? <laughs> just, just, just pass your empties down to our recycled bin and we'll get started. <laughs> cute, real cute. <laughs> You're regressing. You're getting what are kitty, you kitty clothes. About? No, this is the latest thing, man. Well, the latest thing where? <laughs> In Toyland? What is... <laughs> you should have a jacket exactly like no, this. No, thank you. No, thank you. I don't... Hey, uh, ask the audience. Get out of here. Oh, here. We'll, get, we'll get to that later. I know a lot of you I'm out of town. You're, you're out here in the valley, right? Right. Probably looking for something to do after the show. Let me recommend you all go over to the salad bar at the local Sizzler. There's a, there's a Paul Newman victory party over there with all the salad oil you can swill. Yeah. Anyway, I guess we're on uh, spring break? Yeah. Palm, Springs, Calif yeah. Palm Springs, California is a little bit worried. Uh, they called out their special reserves down there, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Take care of them. Last night, apparently, they stopped another rowdy party animal in Palm Springs, and it was embarrassing. The cops made him pull over, then get out of the Northwest cockpit. It was just... <laughs> yeah. Did you see that the uh, Donald Trump's new place opened in Atlantic City? Yeah. What did that place cost? A billion dollars? Yeah. And people showed up. They took in $680,000 in the first eight hours. And a lot of people went there to see who Donald Trump would bring. <laughs> he did not bring a date to the opening of the Taj Mahal. He was a stag. But at least he came with a person he loves the most. So... <laughs> Weird item in the paper last night. It was on the local news, too. The Moscow Circus was here in this country last night. And a clown... Well, the Moscow Circus defected. <laughs> and the police are looking for him, and they thought they had found him last night hiding out in an abandoned Volkswagen. And they shone their light on, and 28 people came out of the... <laughs> out of the Volkswagen. <laughs> See, he was, a, he was a clown. <laughs> They're hot on his trail, though. They, uh... <laughs> They're following a series of size 44 footprints. And they... Of course, the clowns have those big feet. <laughs> okay. I, clown jokes, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, um, did you, you ever read that thing where special weeks are designated by the government? Do you know what this month is supposed to be? No, no, that's good. National, it's National Cable Month. Isn't that exciting? You have cable TV? Sure. Isn't it great? For 80 bucks a month, you'll get Mr. Ed and Zam Fear. You know, for 80 bucks. I was watching cable last night, and I think I got tired at one point because at one point I thought I heard Ed McMahon saying to Lionel Barrymore, you cannot be turned down for any reason for life insurance. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting picture in the paper today, front page from Washington, from the Rose Garden, Michael Jackson with President George Bush. Yeah. Michael was there to get a special award. Now, there is a contrasting style, right? <laughs> Yeah, he uh, visited President Bush and uh, went to go to the Oval Office, and Dan Quayle took a meeting with Michael's chimp, Bubbles. <laughs> not, not the same. Anyway, next Bush's, uh, next summit meeting, I think, is with uh, Millie Vanilli. <laughs> or not. Do you know what today is? The sixth anniversary of what? Did you read in the paper? The Twinkie. <laughs> This day in 1930, the very first Twinkie was made, and it's still on the shelf at 7-Eleven. <laughs> fresh as the day it was made. Yeah. Anyway, tonight, we got a good show for you tonight. We have Mr. Robert Hope is with us. We have uh, one of the great, one of the great blues artists of all times, B.B. King. Now, I did not see this gentleman in rehearsal today, but I hear, understand he's dynamite. 
His name Wonderful. is Jeff Dunham. He's a ventriloquist. They yeah. say he does some remarkable things. So Jeff is with us. And the mighty Carson Art players. So stay where you are. And we'll be right back. A recent trend in the funeral business is holding private remembrance ceremonies for the co-workers of the dearly departed. We take you now to one such sad event. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I know Joe would have been pleased and gratified. Joe, as you all are aware, was one of the finest editors we've ever had at Roger's Thesaurus. <laughs> Probably the best Thesaurus man in the country. He was the finest, the top, the number one man. He said to me once, Bob, Robert, Bobby, after I'm gone, I'd like you to say a few words to my friends, my pals, <laughs> chums, comrades, <laughs> buddies. The thesaurus writer's job, as you know, is not an easy one. It's hard, difficult, tough, strenuous, <laughs> demanding, laborious. At times, the pressure can be in unbearable, intolerable, unendurable. <laughs> but Joe did a great job in those 20 years, and that's why I'm so sorry that he's passed away. But he's in a happier place. He's among the angels. Joe's bought the farm. He's cashing his chips, kicked the bucket. He's been deep six. He's doing the lawn limbo right now. Time sharing the oblong condo. He's making a, making a call from the horizontal phone booth. He's deceased, departed, hard as a carp. He's in the marble mailbox. He's, he's booked into the Motel Deep Six, taking a spin in the brass-handled sedan. He's, he's hanging 10 on the satin line surfboard, booked on a cruise in the dirt submarine. He's doing the half a half time. He's pushing up parking lot, pumping lid. He's snuffed off, kicked out, he's wearing the wooden waistcoat, playing in the subterranean sandbox. He's doing the pine box lombada. I wish he was with us right now. I wish we had his calming presence in this room. I wish he hadn't left us. I wish he wasn't far, far away. Trolling for topsoil trout. <laughs> Dead as a doornail, gone out with the tide. Taking the final curtain, serving a major in pine penalty box. Standing in line at the sod sizzler. Dancing the hokey crokey, riding the satin pony, playing hell hockey, demise, defunct. Flying the marble kite. Signing for the Lower Me Down Bouquet, tipping the Dirt Major D, pushing up Miss Daisy. Yes. Parking, parking the bronze bus, shopping at the Mahogany Mini Mall. We'll miss him. There'll never be another like him. And I mean that sincerely. We started together in this business, Joe and me, two young, cocky kids. We thought we owned the world. Nothing bothered us in those days. And now he's enjoying the peace that cometh to all men. He's finally run his race. He's bitten the dust. <laughs> He's in Limbo City, riding in the soil sidecar, renting, renting the grass tuxedo, going to the slab prom. Yes, crashing the six-handled pool party. He's staying at Club Mud. Yes. He's passing the grave poupon. Yes. He's in the tapered tanning booth. Yes, he's doing... Yes, I know. He's doing, doing the worm wave at Stiff Stadium. He's on the sod subway wearing the toe tag turtleneck, test driving the wooden Buick. He's eating moss muffins. <laughs> Joe, if you're listening, goodbye, old buddy. Farewell, adios, sayonara. La Frida Saint, shalom. Cheerio, au revoir, arrivederci. See you around. Thank you. Merci. Gracias. <laughs> uh, Bob will be here. Doc, you're going to be uh, working somewhere this coming Monday. 
April right. the 9th, he'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, at a place called Rupert's for the Hennessy Jazz Research, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so if you're down that way, drop in and see Dr. Okay. If there's anybody in the world who does not know my next guest, I don't know whom it would be. He's uh, celebrating his 40th year on television, all with NBC. His latest special is Ole. I like that. It's Bob Hope's Acapulco Spring Fleen of Comedy and Music on NBC Monday, April the 9th at 8 p.m. Mr. Bob Hope. Congratulations, 40 years, NBC television. 40 years Easter. Gee, that's incredible. Yeah, that's All with this Yep. I went right on, on Easter and laid some colored eggs for him. Did you, you remember? Who, who was on the very first show you did? You remember? We had uh, B. Lilly, Doug Fairbanks oh, Jr., My goodness. Dagmar, and Dinah Shore. That's not a bad lineup. And Max Liebman's Dancers. You remember from the show? Oh, show? sure. That was the first show. Did you do that one out here or New York? No, I did a New Amsterdam roof in New York. Yeah. And the second show I went back to do, and I got in a cab at the Waldorf, and I said, NBC. And the cab driver said, what, are you going to do another television show? I said, that's right. He said, your first one wasn't too good for me. <laughs> I said, who asked you? He said, I'm the public. <laughs> so even, I got Tom Petty, even who then just they were did a gangster yeah. with me and Sorrowful Jones, and I did that for the opening of my second show. Is that right? Yeah. That's why. What did it cost in those days? Do you have any idea to put on a television show? I remember when Ed Sullivan did his first show, and he got Martin and Lewis from 50 bucks or something like that, and everybody was working for almost absolutely nothing in the early days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, remember, you remember what you paid for the oh, show at all? I don't know. The prices, you know, kept going up and up and up. Yeah. That's long before you owned the studio. I? <laughs> I'm, I'm just picking up the crumbs you drop on the way to the... <laughs> The rest, the rest of us are scrambling for whatever's left here. Sure, sure. Did NBC lay a nice gift on you or anything after yeah, 40 they, years? They put a toilet in my dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and a mirror. <laughs> no, they've been, they've been real nice to me. Yeah. yeah. And you got Bob Hope Drive out here now? Yeah, we got that. Right uh, past the studio? Yeah. They gave me a speed bump. I have a speed bump. <laughs> I'm putting the meters in any day. Yeah. yeah. You, uh... You were down in Mexico, Acapulco? After the Acapulco, right, right. Yeah, for this special. Oh, yeah, it's great, very good. You know, yeah, you beautiful get, weather down Did you get a good break on the weather? Yeah, yeah, we get it. It doesn't rain except till July. I asked the guy on the way to the airport, I said, doesn't it ever rain? It's a July rain. I like that. A little yeah. humid, but, but nice. Yeah. You've been there, haven't you? Been there a number of times. I've been there five times myself. Did you go over and film any of the, uh, the are they still doing those dives off of the, what are they called? Cliff divers? Cliff divers? Yeah, yeah. I took Phyllis Diller and she said, big deal. My blind dates do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the show with you. You've yes, got uh, yeah. Ann Gillian. Ann Gillian. And, uh, and we got Kirk Cameron. And we got uh, Clint Black. What's the singer? Clint Black. Yes. Who is he? The singer, isn't he? He's a and country singer. Yeah. Very few people know him. He's going to be the biggest country star because he's coming out now with the American Music Awards, getting at five awards coming out. And uh, he's something. Yeah. We're real good. You travel, the, the specials you've been doing lately, you've been traveling. You mm -hmm. go to Hawaii, you've been in uh, the islands, I've you've been, been in, in Florida. Hawaii, I've been in uh, the Bahamas, yeah. Tahiti, and now Acapulco. I haven't been on so many beaches, I feel like an oil spill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still enjoy doing your shows as much as you did looking back 40 years? I love it. I love it. Well, you must. You keep oh, doing you, it. Sure. You travel all over the world. Sure. You know. You love it. I do, yeah. And I know Ed loves right. it. You got to be a little hammy to love it, you know. Yeah. But there's fun because it's the positive side of life, you know. And you got to fight when you have a bad audience. And I, I do the Mexican bullfighter. I hear you play here. a bullfighter. Yeah. I borrowed the. It's one of Doc Severson's old outfits. <laughs> uh, we got a little. We got a little. Uh, little clip of um, a little preview. Of what's going to happen on Monday night? Bits and pieces. <laughs> I guess you just watch the Bits monitor. It'll be self-explanatory. This is from Bob's show on Monday night. He must think he's me. Oh, uh, Bob, yeah. I, I forgot you were here. Oh, that's okay. I'm just standing here working on my tan. 
<laughs> Bob Hope, this is Kelly. I'm thrilled to meet you. Well, that's nice. I'm really, I really. <laughs> I just love meeting Kirk's friends. <laughs> As I always say, a friend of Kirk's is a friend of Kirk's. <laughs> See you at dinner? Uh, I suppose so. Bye-bye. Hey, <sighs> who was that? Um, it's my agent. Your agent? Gee, I never kissed my agent. Why not? He's not my type. <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming tonight. The special is Monday night on NBC at, uh, what is the time? It's uh, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock around the country. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming. Okay. Great See you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. My next guest, I always look forward to the appearance of B.B. King. He is one of the all-time great musicians, often called the father of the blues. And on May 30th in New York City, he'll receive the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Would you welcome, please, B.B. King. Just using my name, but I tell you I'm gonna hell the money. I don't want no back talk. You don't like what I'm doing. Pick up your feet and walk. Gotta be crazy, baby. Don't gotta be out of your mind. Long as I'm paying the bill, I'm paying the call. I'll Thank tell you, God. when you appear, you get them cooking. Oh, thanks. Sound like you're having as much fun doing this as you did years ago. Oh, I do. I have as much fun. Uh, parts of me do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never ask you. Uh, I never ask you what BB stands for. It stands for Blues Boy. I was a disc jockey back in Memphis yeah. years ago, in the beginning of my career, and they used to call me the Beale Street Blues Boy. Yeah. So some would just abbreviate and say BB. Yeah. Here I am. Was there a proper name before that? Uh, some names we couldn't mention on the air. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not that bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, not, not, not so good. Yeah. My name actually is Riley B. King. Riley B. King? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My father said that he worked for an Irishman, and the guy's name was Jim O'Reilly. 
So when I was born, they was good friends. They named me after him, but he took the O off. Yeah. Just named me Riley. Riley. I asked him why. He said I wasn't, I didn't look Irish enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody still call you by that name? Uh, a few of my friends still do, yeah. People down home, I usually can tell when I'm in my hometown of Indianola or Memphis yeah. where you lived. Some will say Riley. Yeah. When you were on the Grammy Awards not too far back, you, you were on crutches. Yes, I was. Uh, I hurt my leg. Uh, I've been doing some lecture demonstrations or lecture clinics, if you will, right. a few of the colleges. And one night out at Aurora going to a college there, I slipped on some ice and without skiing lessons. <laughs> <laughs> you went down? I went down, down and tore up part of my leg. And no, you, you perform basically standing up most of the time. Most of the time, yes, but I, after that night, I've been sitting down quite a bit. Yeah. I, I'm trying to work an act out on it now. I kind of enjoy it. You find it, you find it, <laughs> you find that transition playing sitting down difficult from standing up all the time playing? Well, yes, it's difficult because usually I've gotten used to motion, for instance, yeah. like if I'm trying to get a point over, you know. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but sitting down, I've got to learn again. It's almost like learning again, again to walk yeah. my legs. That's interesting. Uh, yes. You were at the White House not too long ago? Yeah, I was to nice. meet the president at the highlight of my career. Yeah. Met the president and gave him a guitar, gave him Lucille's sister. Did he twang out anything at all? Uh, yeah, he, but he likes country music. So I know, I, he's a big country music fan. Yeah, so I said, Mr. President, she'll play country too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he smiled. I think, though, his son had been jamming with it. Yeah. How many, somebody told me, uh, as far as being on the road or wherever you play all over the world, about 300 dates a year altogether? Yeah, we're doing about, uh, we, uh, thinking... Uh, That's a tough schedule, isn't it? Yes, it is. In 56, I did <clears throat> 342 one-nighters. And from that time, I've been averaging about 300 days a year. How do you, somebody told me you got a computer, so when you take things on the road, you, got every, you know exactly what to take and got it all worked out? Right. I, uh, I have a computer, an Amiga computer, and I yeah. set it up there and... And I usually uh, take my guitar and pluck in it what I'd like to hear, and then I bring it to my nephew, Walter, right. and then I said, this is what I want, because the computer plays it for me. Right. <laughs> so you get everything programmed up. Everything went right where I want it. Yeah, that's great. I was told that you had one, too, and uh, your video, you had a problem with the uh, setting the timer on. I couldn't set the timer on the video, and <laughs> my, my wife gave me a word processor for Christmas, and where the program, you know, you...